Hello and welcome back to Rheumatology for Medical Student and Intern. I am Dr. Win Tran, Assistant Professor of Internal Medicine at Win Medical Center. And here you are again, Aline. Hello, Hi, Aline. Tran. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. All right, Aline, what topic are we going to uh, discuss today? So today we'll be talking about infectious arthritis or septic arthritis. Fabulous. So let's just go into the case. What are we seeing today? Sure. Today we saw a patient who was a young female, mm -hmm. about 25 years old, who presented to our clinic with about a week of diffuse uh, body aches, kind of joint pain, and especially in her metacarpal bones mm -hmm. and her proximal interphalangeal joints, also in her knees and her ankles. So one week joint pain, pain, yes. multiple joint pain, basically. Yes. Okay. Keep Poly going. Polyarticular. Good. Which is important for our history because for infectious arthritis, it's very important to know if the patient has monoarticular pain or polyarticular pain. Okay. And our patient also had a rash that appeared about a week ago when the symptoms began. She also had some flu-like symptoms like low-grade fever and runny nose, um, all of which uh, resolved, including her rash, after four days. But her joint pain still remains. So the rash appear and then disappear. How does the rash look like? It's like a slap cheek. Oh, okay. Cheek. <laughs> so it looks like somebody slapped to the face and yes. it becomes redness. Okay. Yes. Hence, it's called a slap cheek rash. So this is a young lady. She mm -hmm. presents with a short period of time, multiple joint pain with a rash on her face and then disappear. But today, when we saw her, she still have some joint pain. So what do you think she has? So one thing that I should mention is her medical history mm -hmm. and social history was pretty unremarkable, except for the fact that she's a third grade teacher. And oh, this is kind there of we like go. classic textbook presentation. Yes. Uh, why, why classic textbook here? Because, so we're alluding to parvovirus here, mm -hmm. uh, which may possibly be the etiology in this case. And usually it's passed on between children, and especially in adults who work with children, like in daycares or school teachers. So probable virus is a very contagious virus. Mm -hmm. Basically, if kids have this, uh, it's likely the teacher, like our patient today, uh, she may have it. And once she has this virus, it may infect her joy, mm -hmm. also her skin. And I think that probably she has what she has today. But let's go more into the lab details to confirm whether she had this or not. What did we see her lab today? So the patient was referred by her PCP and was found to have elevated white blood cells and was found to have a positive ESR and CRP. Yeah, this is very nice. And, and thank you to the family doctor. Usually when we saw patients like this, we would order some blood work. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes we have a very good family doctor who before send the patient to referral they initiate some blood work, like this case, to make sure whether the patient has all the conditions, such as what do you think she may have besides this, uh, the PCV thing? So it's very important to rule out uh, rheumatoid arthritis in this mm -hmm. case in a young female. Yes. Her anti-CCP and RA factors were negative. Yes. Um, so those are the things that um, when we see patients like this, we will order lab, but luckily we have lab today, uh, along with the note from the family doctor, given a short period of the joint pain and also appear and then disappear of the rash, look like, slap, like somebody slapped into the face. Mm -hmm. um, I concur, I think this is likely a viral arthritis and caused by parvovirus that you mentioned here. What do you know about this virus? So this virus is usually present uh, in kids and causes a minor flu-like symptom like headache, bunny nose, um, and kids usually get a rash on the face and it's mm -hmm. called the classic slap cheek disease because it looks like um, the face has a rash, like mm -hmm. it's slapped. And usually when older patients get it, like in this case, this woman, they get um, joint pain. Yes. When you see this, how would we would treat this lady? What would you would do? So in this case, we would treat this lady symptomatically. Mm -hmm. It's very important to rule out other causes, like we mentioned rheumatoid arthritis, but also things like hepatitis B or C or rubella, mm -hmm. which in this case, the PCP was not kind enough to run those tests yes. for us as well. Also important to rule out a monoarticular cause or something like staph aureus, so mm -hmm. that we would treat with antibiotics in that case. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we would treat symptomatically using NSAIDs. 
okay, usually this condition will subside in the next couple of days. Mm-hmm. And the symptomatic treatment we've given her today likely will help her in the next couple of days or weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is a typical case of a viral arthritis. It comes suddenly in a short period of time, come with skin symptoms, but you will see uh, the distribution of joint pain likely symmetric, like entire body start mm-hmm. at the small joint and sometimes can impact the larger joints, like in her case, the knee pain. Anything else you want to ask or share about yeah. this disease? So how often do you see infectious arthritis in your care and how often do you have to treat them with antibiotics? Great question. When we see cases like this, I told Aline that this is a pretty rare case because the family doctor already know what it is. They just want to send to see me to confirm. Um, because in general, septic arthritis is considered very urgent and sometimes emergency. If you think about bacterial infection like step aureus in knee pain or monoarticular um, infection like you just mentioned there, we need to drain the fluid, we need to drain the pus because the longer the pus stay there in the joint, it can damage the cartilage and they may have severe subsequent um, sequela. We rarely see it as outpatient, but rather uh, when you come with me to the hospital, we'll see patients more either inpatient or they come to emergency uh, due to severe joint pain. Classic picture, joint pain, swollen, um, right. leukocytosis, and then when you drain the pus out, you can see grand stain usually um, on either bacterial or you come back with more labs. But that's the classic picture. Right. I think it's worth mentioning that for a patient like that in the hospital, it would be important to run blood work as well because mm-hmm. um, most often the bacterial causes are hemat- hematogenously spread. Yes. And so you can find and isolate the bacteria in the blood. But the gold standard for diagnosis is joint aspiration for culture and gram stain. Yes. Uh, which is we can do it here. We have ultrasound guided mm-hmm. uh, procedure and sometimes you see that um, we look on the ultrasound, we see the joints be very clear. And we use a needle, as you can see the other day, go in between, go right there and take out the fluid. And we also have microscopy. We can look at the microscopy to look for gout uh, and all other things. Usually um, when we take out a pus or anything look like infectious, uh, you can see it here and it will look quite cloudy. It's not yeah. like clear, like yellowish, um, beautiful as you s- usually see on the joints fluid. But you may see a very cloud, angry looking at you. And a lot of times you can say, oh, that look <laughs> infectious. So yeah. so this is, uh, we also sometimes we call fib disease. Mm-hmm. Um, happen a lot in kids, but also could happen in adult. Any yeah. other questions? Well, I was wondering, why is it called Fifth's disease? I always thought that it's because the rash looks like five fingers slapped the face. Hmm. <laughs> Great question. So um, you're right, a fifth disease comes with five fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I like it too. But actually, this is uh, how we name this is historically. So the first disease is miso. Uh, and the second one is scarlet fever. I don't know if you remember. I'm sure you rem- you guys remember mm-hmm. from medical school. So miso is the first one. So we all talk about rash. So skin rash. So the first one is measles. The second one is scarlet fever. Right. The third one, I think, rubella. And the fourth mm-hmm. one is now we, we don't see a lot called Duke disease. Mm-hmm. And the fifth one is this one. And then the sixth one is roseola. So those are the six disease all present with rash, right. with skin rash. And t- we just named them. Uh, and we don't know seven or eight yet. I but, see. So guy, remember five fingers. Uh, <laughs> That's slap. how I remember <laughs> fifth disease in medical school. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? No, I think it's amazing what you can do in your practice, how you can just take the joint aspiration and see it under the slide and be able to diagnose it in your office. I think that's really cool for a rheumatologist to do. Uh, yes. Uh, with today, uh, many rheumatology offices like mine, we always um, have in office ultrasound. The other thing I'd like to share with you guys Septic arthritis have severe consequence right. if we don't treat. Studies show that up to 50% of people, they have arthritis later because mm-hmm. of the damage to the college that may caused by either bacteria or even our immune system with macrophage and all the neutrophil, all kind of inflammatory cells attack the bacteria, but also incidentally 
attack uh, the uh, cartilage and also the joints. Therefore, a lot of people, when they have joy pain, tender, and fever, you need to see doctor as soon as possible. You can go to, directly to the emergency room um, and or to see your family doctor. Anything else, Alin? No, thank you, Dr. Tran. Thank you, Alin. Thank you for um, joining me um, talk about rheumatology for medical students and interns. And we will see you in the next episode.